Smishing is a form of phishing that uses SMS. So if you're texting using an SMS message, that's uh, smishing. That's it. It's just a type of phishing attack. Okay. Uh, oftentimes these will include malicious links. So with multi-factor authentication being so prevalent, often you'll have to log into a website and then that organization will send you a text on your phone asking you to verify a code or something. Uh, if in a, a sophisticated smishing attack, an attacker will time their, their text to correspond with a login attempt on your half. So if uh, they're performing some sort of man in the middle attack and they uh, sniff some packets and they, uh, they find out that you're trying to authenticate to a certain website or a certain resource, they can then time their text attack their smishing attack to correspond with the moment where you pick uh, your, you know, you, to do your two-factor authentication. And then there'd be like a malicious link there. Or the attackers might uh, have you input that code in a different website. So that's a more advanced technique. Mostly it's just phishing over SMS. Spam, this is unwanted emails. The I love you worm was a form of spam. It was distributed by email. And it had the, in the subject line, I love you. So a lot of lonely people fell for that and they clicked on it or, I mean, not necessarily lonely people, but you know, they clicked on the email thinking they had a secret admirer and all of a sudden they were infected by a worm. That's why, part of the reason why I love you spread so much. And this was, these were in the days where spam messages like this weren't as common. I, they were still out there, but it's not like today where you have advanced spam filters. Uh, it really was. It was less common and the way the uh, I love you worm was set up was that it kind of sparked your curiosity. Spim and spam over internet messaging. And this is basically using a message, a chat program. Uh, unfortunately, attackers during COVID-19 would use spam messages to share malicious links. So they would inform somebody that either them or somebody they had contact with had become infected with COVID-19 and they'd spread malicious links with this. And that would, through that malicious link, attackers would then gain access over the user's mobile device. Pretty malicious type of activity, but you know, hackers don't usually have many scruples depending on the hacking group.